third one, I was just imagining, I haven't had my hair cut for such a long time, I was imaginizing, imaginizing, <laughs> imagining, I might cut a fringe in, I was sort of doing that weird thing where I have a fringe, but then it, <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm talking as I'm thinking, but yeah, should I get a fringe? I don't know, fringes are great, aren't they, but they're quite high maintenance, but maybe just a little cut. Fancy cutting my hair myself, but that's just a high road to hell, isn't it? Anyway, hello, how are you all? Today's makeup is going to be a cheerful one, like a little pick-me-up one, because um, she says pulling up her face, literally picking up and pulling up my face. Um, I need it, and um, I'm going to show you a few products to make you cheerful. Um, and I've just been loving this, um, this packaging. The Pat McGrath lipstick packaging is literally the best. This shade is obsessed and it's an orangey coral red and I just want to show you the texture and how easy it is to apply and how easy it is to wear and it makes me feel great. Even if I just pop a little white t-shirt on, um, I just feel really lovely with it. So I thought I'd show you the look. Um, lips are driving me mad and because I'm using a um, strong lipstick, I'm going to use my Pericone Insta Blur, um, which I've loved and used for donkey's years. Um, I won't show you the inside, well I will, just quickly. Probably could be cleaner, but it's just for my own personal use. Anyway, I use it with my finger, that's why I'm saying that. Um, I'm just going to apply it right across my top lip because it's slightly indented and actually just over the lips themselves because it creates a really, really beautiful base. Um, it's just like polyfiller, basically. Really soft, um, it doesn't feel claustrophobic on the skin and it just allows a strong color of a lipstick to glide on, keeps it in place, and it just kind of smooths out the skin. And I need it around that area. Okay, so all skincare's done. I'm gonna start with this new product actually called Halo. And this is from Smashbox. I don't tend to use or even gravitate towards, towards Smashbox. Um, it's a tinted moisturizer with an SPF of 20, and the color I'm using is light neutral. Um, I always know when I like something, when I keep going back to it, um, and I've been using my Max Factor Miracle Second Skin and that's been really, really hydrating with the coconut milk and the probiotic. We must talk more about pre and probiotics actually. I'm fascinated with the new research and science coming through on that matter. Um, anyway, I digress, I've always got a hundred things to say. Um, and I just thought, oh well, is it gonna be any better than that? And it's not any better, it's just a little bit more glowy. So the Max Factor one is fabulous for moisturization and hydration on the skin but this has kind of given my skin a little bit more of a sheen like throughout the day and um yeah i thought i'd share it with you it's relatively new this product um but i thought it gave a real sort of like modern finish to my skin and as we're coming into to winter autumn come on don't wish your life away caroline i'm just going to shove it really thickly over my pigmentation stuff um i thought it won't be quite nice to op um, to offer you another option. So it's £29, which I think is quite punchy for a tinted moisturiser, but it is a good one. So I guess it depends on what your priorities are, right? And mine is, as you know, mainly always my skin. I can pretty much do no makeup makeup. If my skin feels good, then I'm happy. Um, but this is just really glossy. It'd be great for me to use this on shoots, actually, just to kind of get that nice glossy editorial finish. And it feels really light. The texture is gorgeous. I have to say it's it's very, very good, hence why I'm using it. Um, so yeah, I apply it with my fingers. Why do I apply it with my fingers? Because I like to get lots of the base on my skin and not in a brush um, and not in, get sucked up into a sponge. If I'm wearing a sort of medium to heavy coverage foundation, I will take a brush and just, you know, buff the edges up, especially when my mole or if I haven't been dermaplaning my skin, sometimes the product can get caught in the sides and look more obvious. So I just feel a bit more confident if I've kind of just done a little whisking around the edges, but this product doesn't need it. So next, I'm gonna go in with my Delilah concealer. I don't really do the dot thing. I was watching some other makeup artists put, or YouTubers put um, concealer on, and I just don't really do the dot thing. I guess it's just habit, isn't it, how you do it? I guess you're not meant to put too much on, but just in that area, I sort of compact it into that area because um, that's where I need most of the coverage. But each to their own. Right, um, I'm going to just put Oh, you know what? I'm going to use my brilliant brow blade. I have loved and loved and loved this product. Um, it's by Urban Decay, and I have to say there's quite a few products out there that do the inky brow. Um, but I just don't find they last very long. 
and the Urban Decay Brow Blade, one end ink, one end coal, really does last. Some of them you have to sit sort of in the direction of the flow of the ink in order for it to um, uh, go onto your eyebrows easily. Otherwise you're having to shake it and then you start splattering ink everywhere and I mean, that's just a joke, isn't it? But this really does a great job of dispensing the ink um, when obviously I'm not holding it in a downwards direction. And because my eyebrows are quite sparse, it gives me a kind of light coverage of faking the brow without it looking too dense and heavy, especially against my sort of lighter hair colour. Then I can tend to go a little bit mental <laughs> and start painting in way too many eyebrows, um, dreaming of extra eyebrow hair. <laughs> um, and then when that ink's dry, I'll just um, polish up the tails or deepen the tails with a bit more curl pencil, but it's just a great product. Um, so, before I use my powder, I'm going to go in with my trusty Max Factor Soft Copper. See, it's funny, isn't it? Everything is so, oops, dear, everything is so seasonal. Um, and I've been using my corally lipsticks and putting them on my cheeks and uh, I haven't really been using my beautiful nude from Max Factor. And now as we're coming into autumn, I'm just thinking, oh no, I just need my Soft Copper on. Because it just literally gives a lovely glow to the skin that's classy and sophisticated that sort of being sparkly and sort of too made up especially because I'm obviously going to be doing like a brighter lip but being a cream blush you're still going to get you know just a little bit of pigmentation and stuff coming through but to me that just gives just a lovely warm skin it suits everybody obviously if your skin is super dark no it won't um, but that's obvious really isn't it um, right I'm going to go in with the cold pencil now that's dry um, I just suggest you do that because obviously if it's not dry the cold pencil can't adhere to the skin and then you end up with a bit of a sort of slippery mess in terms of brows. And I just need to pull it under there. I don't always think you have to enhance the brow shape from the top because as you can see my brows are always quite high, are set quite high in my head, um, in my forehead. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and so I actually have to pull them down a bit, just the way I've been made. Okay, so brows done. I'm going to be using um, a brand called Studio 10 and um, this is a really nice palette because it's got sort of lots of, it's a very sunny day here, sort of pewters and browns and stuff and it's a lovely shade to wear when I'm wearing something strong on my lip and I don't really want to um, draw too much attention to my eye because then I start looking too made up as such um, but then I need a little bit of shape on my eye so that I don't look too heavy and sockety um, so I like to push the colour back just on the outside there so it's very very soft and shimmery nice and easy to blend sort of a classic palette this really and just the darker shade the smaller one here which, which side of the brush do I put that on there we are just on the outside so super easy to blend and it would just help minimize that thickness of skin underneath my brows but it's just delicate and light reflecting enough not to be too overpowering now I've just come across this mascara by Ico a couple of the mascaras I didn't really like too much because it was super wet and I just couldn't do anything with them this is called lash um, alert um, and it's got um, some stimulating lash growth products in them, in the mascara. Now I love this brush, it's slightly bent, it's a bristle brush, so the mascara goes on really evenly, um, lighter than the sort of mascara I would normally go for, but because it's got lots of fibres in, quite like this packaging as well, um, because it's got lots of fibres in it, it builds up beautifully. Now I've been using it this past week, um, so that's not enough time to see whether the lash um, lengthening ingredients do actually work and kick in. Not that I need them on my eyelashes, I need them on my brows, but not on my eyelashes, they're all right. And actually sometimes when people do start using all the lash lengthening products, they go a bit insane and become addicted and they've got like lashes out here, but they're loving it. So, you know, whatever floats your boat really. 
see look second coat and it really creates luscious long lashes the truth of any kind of um, mascara formula is always when you've applied the second coat I think the mascara needs to sit on top of itself in order to actually do what it's saying that it will do to you, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but it's just a really comfy wand, something about it being short makes it controllable. The only thing is, unlike some of my instant lash mascaras, which I like, chuck it on and you're done. Um, oh, that's the door, one second, I'm back. <laughs> um, where was I? Um, yes, it does so. Unlike my other mascaras, like the Hourglass one, for instance, um, that I love, and that gives a really quick instant lash, I have spent at least a minute or two putting that on. Um, but it does look lovely, and it doesn't smudge, and it does stay, stay put, which um, I really like. I'm going to use a tiny, tiny uh, cotton bud there, just to remove it. As my skin's getting a bit baggy there, the mascara imprints on it, but hey ho. That's all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna, oh. <laughs> it's one of those days. I think we're all having one of those years. Just keep the camera, sorry. And calm, reroute, breathe. Um, right, what I was about to say was I'm just putting the mascara on the top lashes because the lip is so strong. But this is what I want to show you what I've been enjoying. The texture of the Pat McGrath lipsticks, Pat McGrath Labs, um, um, Matte Trance, that was it, Matte Trance lipstick, apart from just being aesthetically joyful, is that it's almost like condensed powder when you put it on your lips. Now, my lovely lips are quite bumpy. If I'm wearing colour and it does move, it just doesn't look very put together, especially if I'm calling myself a makeup artist. That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Anyway, cut to the chase, Caroline, put it on. It's got a nice, sharp bullet. So, I can paint in the Cupid's bow like that. <laughs> I mean, look, it's great, isn't it? Look at the colour of that. And the other side, and I'm literally applying zero pressure, zero pressure. And just round it slightly. I mean, that's it. It's just wonderful. I transfer the colour from my top to my bottom because I'm, um, I'm all right with my bottom lip. That's quite well behaved, meaning when I rub it together, it kind of creates a nice, decent sort of shape. Now the trick here, just take your finger and smudge the line and I'm going to take, mm, no I'll take my finger actually. So at the moment there'll be too much product around my top lip line. So I just go over with my finger, see the difference and I just blur that top line. And now I just tuck the colour inside. And I'm good to go. It's that quick. That's it. Wouldn't do any more than that. Um, I might, might I take a tissue? I might just take a little comfort tissue. And don't bite on it like that because then you, you still leave the lipstick around the top of your lip. So close your lips. And just press gently over the top. And then rub together. And then just because the colour is so soft and powdery, if you've got any lines or the colour isn't even, just use your finger to blend it in. And that's that. And this lipstick, she has made me very happy. So thanks Pat McGrath for that. Um, I can chuck on a little t-shirt, pair of jeans, ch -ch, bit of perfume, bit of positivity, and I feel a darn sight better. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Sometimes wearing colour is tricky. It's all about the texture and the application. And if you've got travelling lipstick lips, which I have, then just bring them down slightly. Um, doesn't matter if your lips are a little bit smaller, doesn't matter. You've got the colour and let me tell you, it makes all the difference. So I wanted to pass on a little bit of joy, be joyful, be happy and uh, love to you all.